Greetings of peace. My name is Ram Hotep, broadcasting on behalf of the number 13 signsastrology.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Just kicking back, uh, getting ready for this celebration, uh, partaking in a ritual for this, which you may call Thanksgiving or whatever you want to call it, but I'm taking advantage of this energy uh, during this particular time. As you guys know, I keep you in tune with all the various different schools of the occult and try to keep you informed on in different aspects and the significance of the different aspects of the occult as it pertains to astrology. So on this particular episode, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to give the astrological explanation to Thanksgiving based upon my research. Now, um, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to talk about the mundane aspect of Thanksgiving and just give a brief history. Um, many of you probably already know it. It's very researchable. You can look a lot of this stuff up, but you know me, I try to be as thorough as possible without taking too much of your time. So um, as far as Thanksgiving on a mundane level, I'll start off with the history of Thanksgiving. And according to our culture, the history of Thanksgiving really is centered around, most people think it's centered around you know the pilgrims coming over to America and pillaging and raping America and essentially taking over the Americas or whatever and taking over the land from the Native Americans and from the free people of this land and that did happen I mean that's definitely an event that took place although that story is not really told correctly either because it didn't happen the way you think it happened it wasn't a bunch of white people with shotguns that just came over and started shooting up uh, Native Americans. Actually, what was going on is that the Native Americans and the Moors in general, on this side of the water and the other side of the water, were already involved in wars. And what the Europeans did, and you got to remember, some of these Europeans were like me that looked like me. Some of these Europeans were pale. Many of them were pale. And what they did was that they seized the moment and they pretty much took over the land and ended the war and essentially they ended the war and when they did that they took over the land because we were already fighting that's what you learn like when you kind of get into some of your uh, studies about more science and things of that nature you'll find out that we were already fighting each other um, they just seized the moment and it's like if, if you see your parents fighting and they're fighting over the house and the, and the fight gets so violent to the point where your dad runs your mom out the house with a shotgun and goes down the street and chase her and basically to the point where you don't even know where your dad or your mother went and they just leave you in a house like what would you do you would seize and take over the house and basically assume the responsibilities of keeping the house up so that's kind of like what happened i mean a lot of this stuff was instigated i mean i will say that it was instigated by a lot of the europeans that came over here and things of that nature so i'm not downplaying anything that that us natives went through i'm not trying to do that it's not me trying to side with anybody i'm just giving you my honest and biased opinion when it comes to this matter so that's one level to to it so many people think that you know that was a celebration thanksgiving is a celebration when they say yeah we took over the land and we took it from the natives and you can kind of say that but when you start studying thanksgiving historically it goes back a lot further than that um there's different aspects to this whole holiday this holiday is very epic because of the fact that it really puts emphasis more so on the global economy and that's what I want to focus on here. The centerpiece around Thanksgiving deals with the turkey. And most people think that this bird called the turkey is called the turkey. Like that's what it was always called, right? That's what you would think. That's just the English name for this particular bird. Or that's the American name for this particular bird. But it's not. See, Turkey is a nation. And was a nation. It was a nation state. And it got its name... Basically, what happened was is that it puts emphasis on the global economy because of the fact that the turkey itself is an American bird. Now, over in the Middle East, they have birds in North Africa. They have fowl that they eat similar to turkey, but it's not as plump as the turkey. The turkey is like one of the most pristine, prestigious birds, and it comes from, actually from the Americans. It's a native of the Yucatan Peninsula, which is very key here, and the Native Americans did not call it a turkey. So you got to ask yourself, why did we start calling it turkey? The Native Americans, they called it Huex Oloti. Huex Oloti, which is spelled H-U-E-E-X-H-U-E-X-O-L-O-T-I. 
Who X Oloti, which is what the Aztecs called it. And that's the original name of this particular bird. But at some point, you got to ask yourself why we started naming it the turkey. So why did this take place? And that's what I'll briefly touch on here. Then I'll go into the occult aspects of Thanksgiving. So what happened was is that the Ottoman Empire and the Turks, and really the Moors, because the Moors were the original controllers of the Ottoman Empire before the Muslims came in and the Islamic version of the Ottoman Empire came in. I'm talking prior to that. Like prior to the Islamic version of the Ottoman Empire, because most people when they think about the Ottoman Empire, they think about Muslims, the Star and Crescent, and you automatically start associating with a lot of religious overtones. And that was a phase of it that came in, but prior to that, they were dealing a trade. And what they did is they would they came over here and they saw that this turkey it was good, they like eating it, it was a nice bird. So they began to harvest the turkey. They took a certain amount of turkeys from over here and at first they would import the turkeys in from over in Americas and from South America and things of that nature over into Turkey and the Ottoman Empire. And for those of you that don't know where the Ottoman Empire was, this is like Northern Africa, Southern Europe, and parts of the Middle East. This is what composed the Ottoman Empire. So they started importing this turkey in. And they not only that, they got tobacco and a lot of other things, a lot of other different foods and things that didn't weren't indigenous to over there. And Brit your British tobacco even comes from over here actually see the idea of tobacco comes from over this side in the Americas and they took it and brought it over there so this bears witness that this is what I'm pointing out here is that there was always a global economy way back in I'm talking about in 1200 and 1100 AD like way back in the days or whatever there's always been a global economy and you get you, you basically bear witness to this while you celebrate this whole Thanksgiving holiday because those people over in Europe and those people in the Middle East, some people that do partake in the holiday, you wouldn't be able to partake in that if it wasn't for those particular Moors and those particular Europeans and those Ottomans and those Turks that came over here to this side of the waters and took, and took advantage of taking a certain amount of turkeys and they began to breed the turkeys over there. And they began to produce the turkeys over there, but it's actually a bird that's indigenous over here. So that's the first thing I want to point out. It, it puts significance on the global economy. It's a very significant holiday but there's an occult aspect to it now you have different religious aspects to holiday to the uh, thanksgiving holiday um many people know that it's a part of the thanksgiving holiday where they tried to sacrifice king james um during the during the times of thanksgiving and that's where you get a lot of significance uh as far as the thanksgiving holiday a lot of the significance of the holiday goes back to king james because you had the uh, Catholic Church tried to sacrifice King James because he represented the Protestant movement during a certain point in the European history and they tried to sacrifice him during this time and they tried to set him on fire actually so that's a whole another level to it so Thanksgiving also deals with sacrifice it deals with harvest this is why you know you kill a bird during this time so it's many levels to it but I'm going to take you into the occult aspect of it that's what I want to focus on here the astrological more so aspect of it and the earliest versions of Thanksgiving goes back to the Mesopotamian Empire and the Mesopotamian Empire they called this particular day a a Kitu a Kitu a K I T U a Kitu and a Kitu was actually a 12 day celebration some say 13 but it was a 12 to 13 day celebration dealing with Marduk and Marduk is a particular Mesopotamian deity going back to Murdoch in Sumeria because Mesopotamia got its rituals from Sumeria. So it even goes back further than that. And in Sumeria, they called him Murdoch. And Murdoch was the original sun god. So when you talk about Jesus Christ and, you know, you talk about Buddha and the different solar figures that we worship today, Horus, they worship Horus in Egypt. Well, back in the Sumerian times, they looked at Marduk as the solar figure. And Marduk, he was associated with the constellation of Taurus. This is what makes him a sun deity or solar deity. And during this time, basically this ritual was basically a preparation and a celebration for Marduk's uh, overcoming of Tiamat. And Tiamat is a name for the earth, but Tiamat, according to mythology, Sumerian mythology, was also the snake or the chaotic energy that lives in the oceans and lives in the center of the earth and Murdoch or Marduk this is going into the Gnostic faith too many of the Gnostics know about this 
that Myrna or Tiamat, I'm sorry, represents the Demiurge. It represents the Demiurge. And basically, Marduk had to conquer the chaotic nature of this planet. And this chaotic nature exists within your body, so it deals with a struggle with itself, but he also had to go to war with external forces. So every, during this time, it was every two years, but it eventually ended up being every year he would go through this ritual, this celebration to get energy and to get bigger back because Marduk was a solar deity. So this is kind of going into like the Jesus story where he went into the underworld and, you know, he stayed there for three days and then he rose from the dead. It's going into that story, but it's a little bit more different when you study it from this angle because this is the Gnostic version of it. And I'm going to give you the constellations that it represents. But Marduk was a solar deity. And during this time, this was during the times when we were in the season of Taurus. So we have different seasons that we're in. Like right now, we're in the age and the season of uh, Pisces, right? Well, during this time, during the Sumerian Empire and during the uh, Mesopotamian Empire, we were in the season of Taurus, the bull. So Murduk or Marduk or Murdoch was a bull deity. He was a bull solar deity. He was actually a sun deity. He was because during this time, this is when the sun is at its height during the times of Taurus. So back in this time, this was actually in Taurus is when the spring equinox will take place, which will be according to the 13th science chart. Taurus will be somewhere along the lines of uh, mid April up until June, up until mid June. This would be the times of Taurus. So this, at this time, back back then, because you got to remember, we go through different ages, and when we go through different ages, the spring equinox date changes. So right now, the spring equinox date is in line with Pisces, but during that time, it was in line with Taurus. So this is why he's a solar deity. So during this ritual, though, this ritual didn't take place during that time of Taurus. This ritual actually took place at the last few days of Scorpio. And this is why you have Thanksgiving even to this day. See, this is what they're really worshiping. They're telling you about this, about a turkey, and it's about the pilgrims and all of that stuff. But the cultists and the spiritualists know that this is representing your your ability to conquer the demiurge, or your ability to conquer chaos, or your ability to conquer matter, the matters of this world. Because during this time, any sun deity or any being of light or any light worker would be at its his or her weakest point. Because of the fact that we have we don't have as much sunlight during this time. So this is the time when those particular dark people usually try to attack the light worker. So he came up with this ritual because this was kind of like paying homage to his ability to every year conquer Tiamat. His ability to tap within the darkness of himself and to go within the darkness of himself and to conquer the Demiurge and to conquer Tiamat. So that's what it's really about. Now, Tiamat, according to astrology, uh, Tiamat is a water snake serpent, but it's actually in astrology, it's an actual constellation. And it's the constellation of Hydra. It's the longest constellation out of the so-called 88 constellations. There are more than that. But the 88 known constellations, Hydra is the longest constellation. And if you look at Hydra on a map, you can Google it. It's a long, it looks like a snake. And it starts at Cancer. It starts at like the head of cancer. The head of the snake starts at cancer and the tail of the snake ends at Scorpio. So this is why you have Thanksgiving right here at the end of Scorpio, even to this day. And I'm talking about on the Eastern Sidereal 13 signs astrology chart. So it, it ends at Scorpio, which Scorpio ends on November the 29th, which will be the last day of Scorpio going into a fucus. And that's when you go into another ritual. So when you go into a fucus, that's when you go into the unknown aspects. This is when you go into the past life aspects and this is when we have a lot of memories and total recalls and a lot of uh, the past comes up in our subconscious mind this gets us ready this is a time when we cleanse ourselves and we heal ourselves because a fucus is the healer so scorpio remember according to the scripture scorpio is pretty much the one that bruises the heel of the son of god so scorpio is the stinger it has a stinger on it because you get kissed by the scorpion or whatever because when you get bit by a scorpion you will look it looks like you have a kiss like if you ever got bit by a scorpion it, it will look like you have a kiss wherever it bit you at because this is when it talks about judas giving jesus the kiss of death this represents the last point of scorpio so jesus after that he went into the underworld and he rose after three days he rose from the dead but this ritual came from marduk see and marduk what he did during this time he went through a 12-day ritual 
that started on what you would call the first day of Thanksgiving. He started this 12 day ritual. And it was, this ritual wasn't centered around turkeys and eating turkeys and stuff like that. It actually was centered around barley or even beer. So he would say a prayer, you know, he would pour out some liquor. He would do a series of things during these 12 days, basically paying homage to the light beings and the constellations and Anu, which was his father, because they worship Anu, which means the most high or the highest light worker. So he would pay homage to Anu and ask Anu to give him strength to overcome the scorpion. And those people that are born, especially those people that are born on the side of light or during these times when we have more sun outside, a lot of times this can be your weakest point. And if you don't know about the inner depths of yourself and the dark aspect of yourself, this could be a very dark time for people that are born during this time. And the dark workers and people that are born on this side, like those people that are born during the times of Scorpio and don't born during the times of Ephucus and Libra and all of that, this is the time where they gain strength. You see, and a lot of people, they feed off of your vampires and a lot of your dark workers, they feed off of your light. So this is the time where they feed off of you. So this is where the harvest aspect and the sacrifice aspect comes from when you deal with um, the astrological significance of Thanksgiving. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. Um, I could go on and on and on about this, but I'm not going to do that today. I just want to kind of give people the occult significance, because I never did this, the occult significance of Thanksgiving and what it's really all about based on my research. There's a lot more to it. This is just a brief episode and segment. Obviously, I suggest you guys research it. All of this stuff is very researchable. Research the names and the terms that I've given, that I've given you today. Research Tiamat. Find out exactly who she is. Research the term Akitu. And research the real original name of the real life turkey. You see, not because it's, it's, it's called a turkey by us now, but again, it's actually called Hu Huex Oloti, was what the name of the Aztecs or the Native Americans called it during that time. Research these terms and research the global economy and get your mind out of the program and the spell of just looking at it like this is a time where they stole and pillaged the land and things of that nature. If that was the case, then how come they celebrate Thanksgiving in Canada? How come they celebrate Thanksgiving in Europe? How come they celebrate Thanksgiving to all of these different nations if it was all about them stealing the land in America? Now, it does have something to do with that, but you, what you got to remember is this holiday was adopted. Do you see? That's what I'm getting at. It was adopted by other cultures, and it goes back way further than that. So you got to research it um, to its fullest extent so that you can get the meat out of it. Um, the last thing I'll point out here is, is that you see, like, the reason why... America always had a connection with the Middle East. Um, when you study the Moorish Empire, when they basically took over the Moorish Empire, those particular, really it was the Catholic Church and religious people, when they took over the Moorish Empire, basically what happened was is that they began to, they, they could now come over to the Americas. See, the Ottoman Empire was a part of the Moorish Empire, but the Moorish Empire was in the Middle East, North Africa, it was on over into the Americas, into North America and South America. So when they conquered the Middle East, that was at that time, that was the head of the Moorish Empire. So they conquered it over there. Then they came over here and began to, they, when I'm talking about when I say they, it's really the religious aspect or whatever, the Catholic Church and things of that nature. And I'm not knocking religion. This is not here, not religion. This is the history. This is very researchable. So it's the religious aspect that came over here and conquered the Americas. But what I'm getting at is, is that the land mandates, when you start to study the land mandates that were signed prior to all of this, the contracts of the land, and really it's not the contracts, it's the mandates of the land over here ties into the land over there. So we always had a global empire. So always during this time of year, always remember the global empire, always remember the Moors, always remember people talk about the bankers and all of that and things of that nature. Remember all of this stuff, the original bankers were seafarers, they were Moors. So this is a good time to remember the Moors. This is a good time to remember your ancestors because I don't care who you are, whether you're so-called white or so-called black, you have both of these sides in your blood. You have a Moor in your blood. You have a pilgrim in your blood. You have a Native American in your blood. You know what I'm saying? And you have a Turk. Many of you have a Turk in your blood. So it's time to like break the racist barriers and stuff like that during this time and just remember the global empire. Remember that we're all one. And it's basically really emerging into this new immortal race. This is what we have to become, an immortal race of humans. So remember the Moors, remember the global empire. And until we meet again, I'll leave you all in. Namaste. Peace. Hotep.